What is going on YouTube? Good morning. So as some of you guys may know, I'm actually a, I, I have my roots in photography in the fly fishing and outdoor industry. So this is, this is going to be a good trip. Uh, this is, I guess this is one, it is technically a destination trip. I mean, I don't know how, what you guys would constitute as destination, but, uh, it's like a five hour drive for me. I'm actually leaving the state. I'm going from Tennessee to uh, Georgia over in the Blue Ridge Mountains and uh, we're gonna go fish for some trout. And uh, so this is, this is uh, it definitely plays into the whole destination photography thing that we kind of got going on here. I'm going out, we're going fishing with uh, my buddy Daniel and we're hoping to get some good shots. I'm going to shoot some footage too which is going to be super awesome so you guys can kind of you know get a little bit exposure as to what it's like uh, being a lifestyle photographer as well at least within the fly fishing industry. I'm going down there for my other business uh, True Fly Supply which we're just basically going down and we're getting assets of you know us fishing and using the product out in the out in the open so it's gonna be a good time uh, got a long drive ahead of me because uh, look I'll tell you this much I was not responsible last night no I didn't go out and party or anything like that but I did stay up way too late I was packing because I didn't do that the night before or I didn't do that you know beforehand like a responsible adult uh, so I just didn't, ended up staying up way too late, mainly because of the washer and dryer and how long that takes. So, but anyways, guys, I'll uh, keep you tuned in on the journey. I mean, it's only a five hour drive, so I don't imagine there being too much commentary the whole way, but you know how we do. Just a quick little thought here. If you're ever gonna do any sort of like distance to like get somewhere to go to either a destination shoot or a fly fishing trip or whatever the case might be. Sorry, I was just making sure my microphone didn't fall down my shirt there. Always make sure that you are not driving through a major city like Nashville or really anywhere for that fact of the matter at uh, 7.30 in the morning on a work day. Because this is awesome. So you guys are just saying, like I'm actually just now starting to move. I have a feeling I don't know how much longer this is gonna last. So I gotta get, oh, yep. See, told you. That's a bummer. Pretty sure like at least an hour of this five hour trip is gonna be just trying to get through Nashville. See look, I also do this guys. When somebody lets you in, a little wave. Takes two seconds. It makes sure that the person behind you doesn't pull out a sawed off shotgun and blow your head off, you know? A little decency goes a long way. All right, so uh, made it through all that traffic. Finally back on the road. And I gotta pee really bad. Like, I just got up, got in the truck, and started going. And now I really, really gotta pee. So I'm conflicted. Like, as a guy, the only time I'm pulling over is when I need gas. That's when you pee. Or, or if I had a bottle. I'm sure we've all been there. At least us guys, am I right? Am I right? but I don't have a bottle. This is an accurate representation of how I feel about this. I have got to go to the bathroom. So dang bad. And here's the thing though too, you think I would stop enjoying my beverages. No, they're so delicious which only exacerbates the issue. So I have two hours, 36 minutes to my destination and I'm definitely gonna make it there before I run out of gas. 
So, I have a choice to make. Do I forfeit my man card and pull over to use the bathroom? Or do I just powerhouse all the way through and hopefully I don't end up with medical condition? Who knows? There's also a minivan in front of me that seems to be driving all over the dang road. Let's go see what they're up to, huh? Oh, she's texting. That's okay, guys. She's just texting as I sit here and film my my YouTube video. Uh, look, uh, look, at least I'm not, like, working with my hands. Anyways. I'm the bad guy. Duh. Duh. Well, guys, there it is. I did it. I'm not proud, but I did it. I had to pull over at the dang rest stop because I had to pee. So, GD bad. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. How long did that knock off my trip? Oh my god. That put us two minutes behind. Two minutes. I do not like being late. Not one bit. No siree, Bob. Not one bit. Yet here we are. Sorry, Daniel. I guess see you when I get there, buddy. Alright guys, we are just about there. Uh, Gaslight came on two miles ago and we got 12 miles. So, it's gonna be a little interesting because I am not gonna fuel up because people who, if anybody watching this who knows me, knows that I absolutely hate being late to anything. So I'm just gonna get there and hope that we can get gas. You know, when we get there, we got 18 minutes. This is a cool little town. Like driving through this little teeny tiny town. I don't even know where I'm at right now. I just, I know I gotta turn up here. Anyways, uh, so what we're gonna be doing, uh, as you guys know, I'm coming up here to film a uh, fishing trip with a guide that's an ambassador of one of our other companies. And that's gonna be all well and good. Some of the things that I plan to do, and we'll see how well it works out, is I want to uh, I want to go ahead and see if I can't get uh, some footage of me like shooting and trying to explain kind of the shots that I'm looking for. That's actually probably him right now that just hit me up. Um, but anyways, yeah, I just I want to get some of those shots of like what we're gonna be shooting kind of what our expectations are as far as, uh, you know, getting certain angles and certain shots. So the thing with uh, fish, especially when you're working with uh, an animal that doesn't breathe the same air as you, we only have a really quick limited time to get the shot that we need. So one of the things that I kind of want to explain is what's going through my head when I'm getting, say like, when I'm trying to get like a cover photo for a magazine or uh, something to use on online. You know, I just want to kind of talk, uh, talk through what those processes are. So that way you understand it better when I'm going through it and it allows me to kind of process the things that I'm doing that I may not actually know why I'm doing those things. So it's going to be a learning experience for both of us. All right, guys, so we're down here in uh, northern Georgia. Made the trip yesterday, kind of hung out with Daniel. We actually got some good shots uh, over in some private water. I got a little bit of footage of that. was using that for a different project, so we may or may not see that on this particular video. But I wanted to take the time to actually kind of discuss what, uh, what tools I'm using. 
in order to get the best uh, photography shots and for you know fly fishing and stuff like that. So uh, I'm shooting with the Nikon 80 to 200 2.8 on my Nikon D3S. What that's going to allow me to do is get those nice tight shots on the fish while still eliminating the background, giving it that nice bokeh. Uh, what I'm also doing as far as like some macro shots is I actually have a Nikon 60 millimeter macro lens uh, with a circular polarizer. Now what that circular polarizer is going to do is the same thing that my polarized glasses do in fly fishing. It's going to take the glare off of that water and really allow the picture to become a more full picture with the fish like with his head in the water and you can still see kind of the scenery that the fish is in. So that's gonna make for a really cool effect. So what I'm gonna do now is Daniel's actually over here fishing in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and take the camera. We're gonna go out there. I'm gonna put a little bit wider of an angle on so that way we can kind of get the whole experience, so to speak. Um, and uh, when he hooks into a fish, I'm actually gonna walk you through kind of what my process is as far as how to actually photograph the fish and what's uh, what's to be expected. So let's head on over there now and hopefully uh, Daniel can hook us a fish. All right, so Daniel just pulled in a really nice brown here. We're gonna go ahead and talk about some of the finer points as to what I want uh, him to do as far as getting that good shot. So Daniel, um, try not to move as much as possible. So what we're working with here is we got a very we got a riverbed that has a lot of sediment. And so what you're trying to avoid is getting whoever's got the fish to kick up a lot of that sediment because it just, it doesn't make for a great photo overall. So Daniel, I'm good. what I want you to do is I want you to face out, like out towards the river instead of out towards the bank. And what that allows you to do as the photographer is get more of the water feature in the shot. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get down real low here. I know you can't see me, but I'm like, I'm crouching kind of at like knee height right now. I'm rocking the 80 to 200. I wanna, I don't really need a high shutter speed for this because there's not a lot of action. So I'm actually gonna turn down my ISO. We're gonna go down to like 320 here. And that gives me a sl slow shutter speed. Turning down that ISO will clean up the image and give you a nice, nice crisp, noise-free image. And there's kind of a bridge in the background, so I don't exactly want that bridge. So I'm actually gonna stand up a little bit more. All right, Daniel, whenever you're ready, go ahead and reach for that brown and then hold it up towards the camera. Boom, he's got that okay corral on the back. Get in there, do a lot of shots because what makes for a really nice photo is that grip and drip. All right, Daniel, go ahead and put them back in the net and we're gonna change lenses. So that way we can get that awesome macro shot that I was talking about yesterday. He, well, <laughs> while we're doing that, he's gonna actually snap a picture on his phone. I'm gonna grab that 60 millimeter with the circular polarizer on it. So we can kind of talk about what that circular polarizer is gonna achieve for us when we go up to take our macro shot. Got to go ahead and wipe this, this lens off here. All right, I'm just gonna join you here real quick. So I'm turning my circular polarizer and what that's doing is it's lining up, I don't know if they're fibers or bands or whatever the case might be, but in circular polarizers, you need them to be parallel with the water glare or with the glare from the sun off the water. And what that'll do is actually eliminate that glare off the water so you can actually get some of the structure that the fish lives in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a shot here in the net. And this is a macro shot, so it allows me to get in really, really nice and tight. All right, Daniel, whenever you're ready, go ahead and lift them up again. And hold them at about like a 30 degree angle to the camera. Hold on here. All right. 
All right, go ahead and put them back in the net real quick. We're gonna do one more shot here. So you don't wanna lift the fish out of the water for too long. So kind of a general rule of thumb that I use whenever I'm uh, taking pictures of a fish outside of the water is I hold my breath as I have the fish out of the water. And what that'll allow me to do is be conscious of how long that fish can't breathe as well. So we try to eliminate as much stress on the fish as possible. So now we're gonna get that, that awesome release shot. So what I'm gonna do, Daniel, is when you lift up, try to hold the fish and I'm gonna actually pull the net away from you and throw it on the shore. Yep, ready. All right, focusing in on the fish. Go ahead and let him go, Daniel. Having that circular polarizer actually allowed me to photograph the fish as he swam away, so that way, you know, I didn't have the sun glare on the top of the water. Awesome fish, Daniel. Yeah, we're gonna come uh, out here. Nice. Hashtag conservation. All right, see, so can you come out just a skosh more? Perfect. So I want to try and get as a new background here. So like last time we had the bridge, so what I'm actually going to do is angle myself this way so that way we have more of the green foliage in the background. So again, I'm going to get nice and low here for the shot. I'm going to get focus. Hold on here, I got to get focus first. I'm actually going to lower my ISO again so that way the shutter speed goes down. Keeping in mind that reciprocal rule we talked about. And Daniel, go ahead and give me a nice grip and drip. Pull it up to about a little higher. Perfect. All right, go ahead and put her back in the net. Oh yeah, some of these are actually gonna be really awesome shots. So I'm gonna switch over to the 60 macro now with the circular polarizer on it. Don't fall in the water, baby. <laughs> some Georgia, Georgia steelhead, huh? All right, now that we have the 60 macro on here, Gonna get nice and close. Let's get an in the net shot with the sun shining right there. Cause they got that circular polarizer on. Oh yeah, look at that shot, Daniel. Yes. Boom. Yep, we're gonna do another uh, grip and drip here. All right, I'm ready. All right, and go. We're going to go ahead and do a release shot now and go ahead. All right, bye. Thanks for playing. Another awesome fish, Daniel. I'm actually, she didn't take off too far, so what I'm able to do with the circular polarizer is actually get shots of her just hanging out in the rocks, which makes for cool photos as well, if they turn out.
So as you guys saw, we had a lot of fun fishing down in northern Georgia with Daniel. Uh, there was some things that I'd like to change about my shooting style though. I kind of wish I maybe included a little bit less of the um, road trip and maybe a little bit more on the whole information and I wish I kind of kept it a little more concise. But I had a lot of fun shooting it and so I think I think uh, taking all that into consideration, this video has been a pretty good learning experience for me. Now what I plan to do tomorrow is actually throwing out a video on kind of the live editing session, if you will, on uh, what we're going to do with those, uh, those photos. So I've actually downloaded everything to my laptop right here. It's all ready to go. And tomorrow we're going to walk through the process of how I cull my images and kind of what my uh, editing process looks like for fly fishing specific images. So stop on by tomorrow uh, to check that out and uh, see you in the next video.